Let us take you on a journey. Imagine that everything that has ever happened in the universe up to this very day is condensed into one single year. The 1st of January marks the Big Bang. With the beginning of May, our galaxy, the Milky Way, is formed. Around the 14th of September, our home, the Earth, is formed into the disorder of an adolescent universe. By mid-November, eukaryotic cells establish control over our young planet. Now, let's take a closer look at the events of the last month, December. On the first day, the Earth's oxygen-abundant atmosphere is formed, creating the optimal living conditions for every species found on our planet today, setting into motion the chain of events known as evolution that led to the appearance of the first vertebrates by the 17th of December. With the arrival of Christmas Eve, our advent guests, the dinosaurs, arrive only to live five days later, a mere day before the new year. Finally, at 10.48 p.m., just one hour and 12 minutes before the end of the cosmic calendar year, us humans emerge in our most primitive form. The current time is midnight, 1st of January. From this, we get a clear picture of our insignificance in relation with the history and time scale of the universe in the whole of space. Therefore, mathematically, mathematically, the odds of life being limited to Earth are practically zero. Other life forms are out there. Finding them is just a matter of if or when. And we're doing our best, searching day and night, years on end. But are we looking in the right direction? The discovery of extraterrestrial life can only be a sex success if we realize that life as we know it, carbon-based and water-dependent, might not be as universal as we think. However, this approach does not yield a high success rate. After all, how do we know what to look for? We project our habitability criteria onto the life forms we are hoping to find, because it's the only existing one we know for sure. Our Earth is living proof of this. The discovery of extraterrestrial life is a gate that we see in the distance. It is a very real possibility, but no one knows if we will ever actually be able to open it. We also see the fence framing this gate, and we can look through its slits. In other words, we are able to predict some of the consequences and impacts such a discovery will bring. But unfortunately, the fence is not all transparent. There are bound to be effects we simply cannot foresee. So, what can we expect? Space exploration is expensive. Everyone knows that. But is this whole alien life business the whim of some crazy group of scientists? Or is there potential long-term profit for all of us? Even if the life forms we discover are of the simplest nature, a group of cells perhaps, they will present us with a myriad of possibilities in all aspects of our everyday lives. Let's take overpopulation, which is one of the most pressing issues we face at the moment and goes hand in hand with increasing pressure on the farming industry and our planet's natural resources. If we were to discover exotic organisms that have a radically different chemical composition from us, humans, utilizing their waste or even they themselves as new resources is a realistic economic ambition. At the early stage of such a discovery, it is sensible to bring any samples home and test them under laboratory conditions in order to determine their degree of practicality. As always though, the presence of risks is certain. The very reason behind the usefulness of extraterrestrial organisms could also be a possible source of danger. If they are drastically different from humans biologically, we could very easily end up willingly infecting our planet with brand new disease. There are two possible reasons behind this. The first is that they themselves are affected by the illness, but not being familiar with their physiology, there's no way we can spot such an abnormality. The second possibility is that they are perfectly healthy. However, our immune system reaction is unpredictable, purely because we have never had the chance to encounter anything of this sort before. Now, 
Extend this to an even greater degree of abstractness. Genetic modification of these extraterrestrial beings, for example, could potentially present us with gigantic leaps in medical research, leading to discoveries and inventions no one had ever dreamed of solely as a result of the unique approach taken. Suppose these organisms are extraordinarily distinct from us. Studying and experimenting with them may, for example, enable researchers to develop new vaccinations and medical treatments. This is all very good, but are we morally and ethically entitled to such interventions? Using aliens to our own advantage would be like as good as treating them like property, but aren't we doing that anyway? We farm crops and creatures, practice animal testing and exploit our planet. Having won the local evolutionary race, however, does not automatically grant us this right. On the other hand, profiting from alien biological uniqueness isn't necessarily a selfish one-way process. This introduces the complexity of the social implications such a revelation will induce. Let's consider now the religions of the world. Those strictly tied to cult of personalities such as Christianity, Judaism and Islam, among others, are likely to encounter difficulties adapting to this new world order. On the other hand, less strictly geographically bound belief systems, for instance Buddhism, are fundamentally more transcendent, allowing for an interplanetary reform, as the elementary idea of soul transfer between living creatures isn't by definition limited to Earth. Realizing our lonely existence is a false conception leads to the only viable assumption. Evolution is a universal phenomenon. Hence, even if the only extraterrestrial life forms we ever encounter are primitive organisms, we can be sure that our intelligence and advanced state is not unique, but rather a state of the general progression curve of an, any other planetary communities of living beings can embark on. New knowledge equals new fields of research, creating job opportunities and the foundations of an open-minded society. It will furthermore change our education systems radically. Despite the predictable advantages, however, conflict of some sort is inevitable. If alien farming does indeed prove to be immensely useful, be it in whatever industry, political tension will be imminent. We will find ourselves at the dawn of a new era of colonization, domestic and international dispute. Should the home of these alien life forms turn out to be suitable for human inhabitants, first world countries, especially those already heavily involved in space exploration, will have the advantage of occupying territory. In the case of an apocalyptic scenario unfolding, forcing us to leave Earth in a distorted population to area ratio is expected, potentially generating an interstellar immigration crisis. Perhaps World War III will be fought against the beautiful scenery of the little known outer space. Therefore, it makes sense for any such discovery to be dealt with secretively in order to avoid an immediate international crisis. Additionally, the public's reaction is more likely than not to be panic and fear-induced, making it almost mandatory for such a piece of information to be released to the larger audience gradually. If so, how can we be sure that extraterrestrial life hasn't already been discovered? Thank you.